how to properly use a color chart in post-production. So this is the one I use. It's the Color Checker Passport for Video made by X-Rite. Um, you've probably seen it in some of my past videos here on the channel. I've certainly done a few videos on it before. I feature it quite often here. I love the durability and just the overall build quality of this thing. I take it on every single job. But I've only recently come to realize that I have not been using this thing to its full potential. Like your TV show with your dog. Dog times. <laughs> So in the past, I've used this chart in DaVinci Resolve. I've used it with the auto color match feature and the color chart window to get both colors and exposure to a neutral starting off point when color grading. But in my experience, as it is with most auto presets, it doesn't always give the best desired results. And it can get a little confusing if you can't remember the exact camera settings that you were using on the day or what log profile you were in, or if you just don't understand the color pipeline. And even then, it can still sometimes overcorrect, and if you're not careful, it can even do more damage than good. So today, I am gonna show you the easiest and quickest way to use one of these color charts, no matter what color grading software you use. As long as you know your way around power windows, you're gonna be able to use this to its full potential. Let's uh, jump into Resolve, and I'll show you how I use this color checker passport for video on a couple recent jobs. One of them was shot on the Red Komodo, and the other one I shot on the Sony FX30, because it doesn't matter what camera you use or what combo of lens and camera you're using, you can use this chart to literally fix any issues with color, exposure and skin tones and just in a matter of seconds. So let's jump in and get into it. All right, folks, we changed positions here. I just had to be at my work desk with my mouse and my control panel and the speed editor, just a normal workflow of what I'm used to. Uh, but anyway, so we have some clips in here. We have some uh, Komodo footage and then we have Sony FX30 footage. Okay, so we're gonna start with the Komodo footage. So I'm gonna quickly show you what I do with every project. I always work under Resolve Color Management. So in here, I always do DaVinci YRGB Color Managed Color Science. But I, you're gonna to wanna to uncheck the automatic color management and change your color processing mode to HDR DaVinci Wide Gamut Intermediate. And then down here at Output Color Space, I always change that Rec. 79 Gamma 2.4, right? Then I scroll down here and I just check Make Broadcast Safe. Then I jump over to my Camera Raw tab. The DaVinci Resolve default is always airy. I don't know why, even if you hit save, it's always airy. So you just have to tell it red. Okay, so now you just have to set in your parameters for red. So I like to do half res premium. I like to do 16 bit depth. Okay, decode using the camera metadata, but we're gonna change that to project so we can change our project settings. Color science, IPP2. The color space is red, white, gamut RGB. The gamma curve for me was log 3G10. I'm gonna do uh, apply the metadata curves. I'm gonna change my chroma noise reduction to high. And then for, I wanna use camera metadata for the ISO, my exposure adjust, my color temp, and my tint. And now I can save that. Now you'll see that it automatically took this out of log. And that's because of the resolve color management. I absolutely love that, right? But you'll notice it didn't do it with the Sony because it can't identify non-raw footage. So what we have to do with the Sony is if I tag all of those clips in one, and then I right click and I have to input the color space and tell it that it was Sony S Gamut 3 Cine S Log 3, boom. So now these have a very basic uh, kind of LUT applied to them. You'll notice hers is really down. We're gonna fix all of this right away. Okay, but let's start with the red footage. This was an exterior day, exterior setting that we did on the red Komodo with the Schneider Xenons and a really awesome rooftop kind of setting that we were doing. Let's say this is an edit I've just gotten from my editor. Let's say this whole timeline is the entire edit. Well, I go in, I have my footage saved, I archive everything, and I pull all of my color chart clips, right? And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna throw them at the end of the edit when I color grade, right? Okay, so we'll just pretend that this is that whole edit is just one clip, but we're pretending, right? So there's the chart. <laughs> Shout out to Tristan being goofy. I'm gonna show you first, if you are a DaVinci Resolve user, how you can use the auto color match. But first, I gotta give a shout out to the number one sponsor of the show, and that is the Dog Times Patreon. This is my virtual clubhouse for indie filmmakers. I drop two new videos over there every single week with behind the scenes and lighting breakdowns on the jobs I do out here in Los Angeles. We talk about 
all the challenges you will face as filmmakers and image makers. Plus, how to navigate being a successful freelancer, whether you're an LLC or an S-Corp or a combination of both, like I am, or if you're just simply starting out. So join us at patreon.com slash Justin Phillip. All right, shameless plug out of the way. So you're gonna go in here into the color match. First thing you wanna do with your drop down menu, make sure you have it set to your exact color chart. You notice this is a very limited list, uh, but lucky for us, x right Color Checker Passport Video is on here. So first thing I'm gonna do is change that. Now in our window, we wanna drop down menu and change it to color chart. And there's our color chart. We're gonna zoom in on this so we can uh, You'll have to excuse Tristan's tongue there. You know, sometimes this is okay to use this auto color match. I don't like to do it that often, but, uh, and you'll notice that the color chart, the checker chart has these little corners and you can just instantly align the window to that. This is very generic and I, I used to do it this way. I don't do it this way anymore, but I'm just showing you guys if you have resolve. Your source gamma, you are gonna wanna tell that what the actual gamma of the camera was. Mine was red log 3G10. Now our target gamma is gonna be in line with what our, uh, our project is, which is uh, DaVinci Intermediate, because I just showed you I work under Resolve Color Management. So now the target gamma is DaVinci Intermediate and I'm also gonna change the target color space to DaVinci Wide Gamut and I hit match. And there you go. So you notice it kind of automatically did like a very generic auto color match for colors and exposure. I'm gonna explain this, this chart, okay? The top row here is your primary colors. The second row from the top, this one here, that is your skin tones. This is universal skin tones for pretty much across the world. This third row down, this one here is your middle gray kind of gradations. And then the bottom row is you know clipping point to black. That's how it kind of does that auto feature. I wanna start over though. I'm gonna show you guys how I do it. Very first thing is go into my windows and I'm just gonna create a very basic window. So the first thing I'm gonna do is do my exposure. So if you don't wanna do auto exposure, you can use the top part of the chart and this is obviously for your white point, your black point, and your middle gray. Now you see the waveform is only showing me where the white point and the black point in the middle gray is. I really just use this to focus on the middle gray. You'll notice my middle gray is a tad low. Now this is up to taste, wherever you like to put middle gray for you, and maybe it goes beyond you. Where does your project need to put middle gray at, right? So now you're talking about how is the overall look and tone of the piece that you're working on. Me coming from the narrative world, that's very, very important. For you, maybe it won't be. Here's the thing too, this isn't like, hey, this is how you color gray. That's not the type of video this is. This is a video to show you all how I do a jumping off point. I like to get all of my clips at a very neutral point. And because I work in the narrative world, this helps me keep everything consistent because I work in the ultra low budget narrative world. Where we're very limited on time, resources, and crew. When you're working like that, you tend to have inconsistencies from shot to shot, even if it's in the same exact lighting setup. Certainly when we're doing these day exteriors like this project was, right? So using the color chart, trying to remember, trying to have my AC remind me to use it in every setup, you know, regardless if it's the same scene, I like every time we change the setup, things are slightly tweaking. Certainly if you're outdoors and the sun is moving, the chart is gonna help me maintain that consistency from shot to shot. There's so much reflection on the black. That's what kind of boned us on this one, uh, unfortunately, right? So when that happens, you'll notice like, and that has a lot to do, you know, we're moving very fast in the day. You wanna make sure when they hold this thing that it's not, see like there, it's getting reflectance. You don't want any reflectance on it, or you're gonna get in a situation where the black is gonna get a little more crunchy than what you want as a starting off point. Unfortunately, when you get the reflected on the black, you're not gonna be able to use that anymore as your black point, right? So you're only gonna be able to focus on the middle gray. We just really need to push the middle gray up a little bit, but obviously you can see that it's getting a little too weird. So you do want your black point at least hitting the 128, you know, you're just gonna have to push and pull this until you can get to somewhere that is actually going to work like that. Let's try that. Mainly what I'm doing now is I'm looking at the detail in his hair. If I disable this, see we've got a lot more detail in his hair. And a lot of that is because I crunched it too hard. See there, I was crunching the black point a little bit too much. I'm gonna bring this down to my primaries now. You're gonna wanna turn on your vector scope, see where they're landing. Look how saturated that red channel is. First thing I'm gonna do is go to Hue versus Sat, lay points on each of my axes on the graph because these match up with the vector. And the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull back the saturation on the red channel. I don't really like how red it is. 
the magenta, the hue needs to be fixed on the magenta. I see that. So then you jump over to hue versus hue. So you use hue versus hue curve to you know, get your, the hue of your colors correct. And then you use the hue versus sat curve to dial in the saturation of each of the points when you have a power window directly over the primary color row of your chart, right? So right now I'm just dialing in the hue of all of these. The blue might be a little low. I kind of like to ride that right there. The yellow is just a little too saturated, but it's not bad. Cyan's a little off. We might get that one a little correct. Okay, now let's jump back to the sat. And I'm going to pull back the saturation of the yellow just a tad. The green it might be a little saturated. The cyan might not be enough. Let's push him a little bit. Let's just go with that. We'll take this off. We're still like really saturated. We're pushing the saturation on that. Uh, now it's getting really grainy because obviously we're, you know, we're zoomed way in on this. Now let's take a peek at the skin tones here. Skin tones are pushing a little yellow. So I might just slightly adjust the hue a little bit. Okay, let's pop out of this. Now that I have that, I'm going to save a still of this, go back to my clips, and I'm going to apply that grade. Let's blow that up and see how it goes. So that's with what I did. This is where it started, and that's with just very basic neutral starting off point. And from there, we could kind of, you know, massage this in a little bit. You know, we would start doing the grade. We start adding power windows. Me personally, I would say, well, it would have been nice to have a little bit more negative fill on the day. And I'm going to throw up a gradient window. Let's highlight that. Go over here and get to the waveform and just kind of like pull this down a little bit. Okay. That's the first thing I want to do. So if I turn that A, B off that and off and on, blow that up, off, on, right? So it's we're just kind of like honing the energy a little bit, honing where the audience should look, bypass, and there's, again, this is just a starting off point. And we could even finesse this. Maybe we want to check those skin tones. Let's go back to our vector scope, grab our color picker. It's sitting fine. Let's see where he's landing on the waveform. He's a little hot on the waveform. Honestly, I'm going to pull the gain down a little bit, right? There we go. I think our exposure was a little too much. Bypass there, bypass there. Let's get out of this and now let's jump to the Sony footage because this is where things can get a little interesting. This was a situation where we only really took one shot of the color chart when two people were at the table. So if I get out of here and I show you the footage, see that's like cross coverage at the table. The close ups is obviously the close ups, this is the wide. Well, we didn't do the color chart in the wide, unfortunately. We only did it for this. I'm going to bypass the auto feature altogether. And the first thing I want to do is get in here and let's just focus on our exposure. And you'll see, yeah, I, I might just jump on the offset and we'll just push this up, right? But now I should probably bring those blacks down a little bit and we should probably push this up a little bit. I'm going to start with this. I don't know what this is going to look like. Let me start with before. We'll blow it up before, after, right? It's just bringing that to a more neutral starting off point. I'm just gonna keep using the same window and I'm gonna now drop it down and focus on my primary colors. So this is where you'll notice where the red uh, camera varies very significantly versus the Sony. And you'll notice the red channel is always a little strange, but we even saw it was strange on the, so on the red too. So both the Sony sensor and the red sensor kind of really kind of push that red channel. Uh, the hue isn't too bad. I might adjust the magenta. See how the magenta was a little bit pushing too much to the red side. Blue looks good. Yellow looks good. Honestly, these all look good. I think I'm going to jump to the saturation. I always like to pull back the red. I just feel like the red channel is just a little much on the Sony cameras. And I'm just going to pull that back a little bit. So let me disable it now that I've adjusted the primary colors. Let's go full view. And that's where it started with just resolve color management. And this is where we're getting a starting off point to having adjusted exposure in the primary colors. Okay, let's go back to our window now. And now I'm going to drop it down onto the skin tone. And look at that. This one's damn near perfect on the skin tone indicator line there. Uh, I'm going to leave it. A lot of that is due to the simple fact that I always use my Sekonic 800. And I use this just to get a really nice um, neutral skin tone because we know in post we can make it be whatever we want. So I know I did this all in one node, but I did that for sake of time and not having to keep recreating the power window. I'm going to take a, a still of this because now I'm going to apply this to both the close up of our guy and the close up of our girl. If I disable this, that's just with the color management. 
versus where we brought it, right? You'll notice her skin tone looks a little better. And then if we get out of here, and if I hide my clips, I can jump over here to the primaries, pump my wheel here, and just see where she's landing. Her skin tone's landing good, right? We'll put that down. We'll jump over to the waveform. Let's see where she's landing along this. Could say it's a little down, but it's a nighttime dinner thing, you know? It's a nighttime dinner thing, and I would say we're at a really nice starting off point to really start doing more of a creative grade with this. You can see he was sitting directly in front of the kitchen of this little tiny apartment. So his is gonna be, you know, his would probably require doing an outside node to kind of bring his outside world down. But right now I wanna see where his hottest point is landing. It might be a little high. We might pull the gamma down a little bit, right? To make it match, we pulled that gamma down a little bit. I always like to pull the highlights down because notice this, I'm gonna pull the highlights down, kind of solve that issue. But I would also probably fix that in an outside node. Uh, I'm sorry, an outside window node. Now, the downside is this light back here is actually the actual practical stove lamp light. Not an idea that I would have liked to done. I would have rather just put my own little cube light in there or puck light, um, but it is what it is. We, we were rolling with the punches. So that's all natural, just gross, gross. So we could always do an outside node and kind of adjust that a little bit. But right now we're just focusing on our guy, right? So let's um, disable this first, blow this up. That's before any primaries or skin tone fixes or exposure, and there's with the new, right? It's very, very subtle. Very, very subtle. It's almost damn similar, right? This example is hard for me to do, I'm not gonna lie, because I always use my color meter, right? But I wanted to be able to show you guys examples from real world jobs, obviously. You know, you're not seeing a drastic change with the chart because I do use my color meter more. So now I don't know if this video is more promoting the, the, the meter than it is the chart. But look, if you didn't have the meter with you, the chart would get you in a really awesome starting off point if you don't have the meter. I use both. The meter is never gonna let me down because on the day, I like to be able to get the skin tones uh, as close to a nice starting off point as possible on the day because I know that clients and producers and directors are looking at the video village. Even as low budget as I operate, those people are still involved, right? So I don't wanna be like, ah, oh, yeah, you know, I don't want them looking at some crazy color and then me saying, you, you know, we're gonna fix it in post, right? No, I don't play that game you know like like I want to try to get it as as close to possible on the day right so I make sure that all my monitors have the same LUT a LUT that I've chosen and these are things that you know um, you have to consider now you would say like yeah are we you know we're getting a little yellowy a little orangey a little tungsteny vibe I would probably match his to hers but again he is sitting in front of this so should we do it real quick yeah because I'm that way so let's do it real quick so I'm, I'll show you what I'm talking about, right? So I would just do a little window around our guy, okay? We can fan it out. We can do it now or later, it doesn't matter. I'm gonna do option O, and now I'm in the outside window world. I'm just going to get on the offset. Let me jump over the waveform, and we'll just kind of like pull that back, that world down a little bit. Let's try to make it match hers a little bit. Maybe he's gonna need a little bit more love now, maybe. We can try to match that up, okay? So when we jump down to our next one, yeah, she's much more nuanced than he is. He is a little bit flatter than the girl even, but in this particular story, she is kind of the villain, right? Um, in, in terms of the script, right? So this could be more of like um, philosophical foo-foo stuff, but uh, the reality is those are things you have to think about too, from the narrative world, right? You guys know I primarily work in the narrative world. So um, the heroes, I tend to kind of light a little brighter versus the villains are kind of, as you can tell, they are a little darker. But, you know, if we wanted to change that, you could still do that, you know, we could, we could fix this, you know? Now we're getting somewhere to similar, right? A little bit crunchier, we could keep kind of crunching him out a little bit. Now they're looking a little similar, right? Um, let's go full screen. Whoops, <laughs> yeah, now they're looking pretty similar, right? And that's, uh, yeah, and some people would say, well, man, it's pretty grainy back here. I don't know, I don't mind it. I really, really don't. 
All right, guys, that's what I do for getting, you know, just a great neutral starting off point. And, and then from there, you saw with the Sony footage where I started to play around with the windows and stuff. You know, a lot of it is to taste. Obviously, everything is to taste. But again, that's the starting off point, right? I'm only showing you starting off point because when it gets to color grading, I think, you know, everyone should do their own thing, honestly. Okay, I thank you all for the support and we'll see you in the next one. For now, that is a wrap. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I know it's all technical, trust me. You don't have to think of it as technical stuff. I was an economics major. I don't know any of this stuff. So for the first time ever on a paid job, I'm using this Mica variable ND adapter. I usually don't mess with it, but after using the Revar Cine, I was like, no, I kind of like this Mica one after the testing. So we're using this and it's coming in clutch. The one thing I'm doing though, is I'm keeping one stop of IRND in the map box.